गुड मॉर्निंग दिस इज बार्नोलिजी क्वेश्चन फॉर इरोडेशन एंड स्टोर ओके दिस इज ए टॉपिक फ्रॉम द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ फ्लिप मैकेनिक्स एंड इन द कोर्स ऑफ फ्लिप मैकेनिक्स यू लर्न दैट यू लर्न बार्नोलिजी क्वेश्चन एलोंग ए स्ट्रीम लाइन ओके एंड दिस इज बार्नोलिजी क्वेश्चन फॉर इरोडेशन एंड फ्लो बोथ आर डिफरेंट दो द A resulting equation is same, but the flow field for which this is applicable that is different. Okay. Uh, previous to this video or previous to this lecture, irrotational flow was discussed. You know the meaning of irrotational flow. Here I am not going to discuss anything about irrotational flow. Just mathematical form of a irrotational flow will be discussed. Here also, since it is Barnard's equation, so here also viscosity, that is effect due to the viscosity, will be neglected. Means viscous forces will be neglected during the derivation of the uh, during the derivation of the equation. Okay, the effect of viscosity will be neglected, and here the flow is not along a streamline. Okay, here in this case, flow is not along a streamline. and the other three conditions remain the same uh flow is incompressible okay it is applicable only for incompressible flow the flow is inviscid that means the flow is in viscous uh means non viscid or uh, non viscous or or what or the flow is applicable only for steady flow so these are the conditions okay so uh since these are the conditions so to derive this equation we need three dimensional cartesian coordinate system okay so i am drawing the same thing here say these are the axes the vertical one is taken to be z this horizontal one is taken to be y and this one which is in the direction perpendicular to the direction of the boat this uh, sorry sorry not this is z this is x okay this is x x is the perpendicular direction to the boat okay and uh, we are taking a fluid element which is which is suitable for cartesian coordinate system that is here the fluid element is like a parallel pivot okay so this is the fluid element uh give the name of the corner points a b c d okay and uh, here e f g h okay these are the corner points so here what uh, what we are going to consider force due to pressure and you know the pressure acts only on the surfaces there are six surfaces okay there are total of six surfaces so say here pressure in the direction of y is the pressure in the direction of y and so this pressure p is acting on the surface a e h d okay p is acting on the surface a e h d and you know that p should be normal to that surface and opposite in the opposite surface say the force is uh, what will be the force these are the dimensions of the parallel pivot along y the dimension is del delta y okay along z the dimension is delta z and along x uh, which is along x here this one that means this ae or the bf okay ae i am not showing here ae i am just writing here ae is equal to delta x this dimension ae or bf both are same ae dh cg bf all are same okay this dimension is delta x so what is the force in this direction in the direction of y in the positive direction of y that will be equal to p multiplied by the area what is the area this dimension ae is delta x therefore the force will be 
P into delta Z into delta X. Okay, that will be the force in the positive direction of Y, and in the negative direction, what is the pressure? Yes, here in the negative direction, pressure will be P plus rate of change of pressure with respect to Y direction, that is delta Y, del Y, P plus del P del Y into this dimension delta Y. This is the pressure in the opposite direction. This pressure is acting on the surface BFGC. Okay. So, since this is the pressure on the opposite surface, therefore, and it is acting in the negative direction of Y. So, with a negative sign, you write the force. So, force is equal to P means the pressure P plus del P del Y. Okay. Into delta Y into the surface area which is equal to delta Z into delta X. Okay, this is in the opposite direction. Right? So, this is acting in the opposite direction and uh, since uh, Y is taken to be the horizontal axis, Z is taken to be the vertical axis and X is also horizontal axis. Therefore, in this direction there will be no component of weight or body force. Say if F be the body force, say F is the body force and F has three components along X, Y and Z directions. Those are Fx, Fy and Fz. Okay. F is the body force which is equal to body force per unit volume. Okay. Then Fx, Fy and Fz are the components of the body force along X, Y and Z coordinates or axis. Okay. Therefore, in the direction of Y, what will be the body force? So, in the direction of the Y, positive direction of Y, Fy is the body force per unit volume. So, what will be the body force? So, this force multiplied by the volume. Volume is how much? It is delta X into delta Y into delta Z. Delta X into delta Y into delta Z. So, this is the total body force in the direction of Y. What is the result? Here, this P delta Z delta X and here minus P delta Z delta X, they will be cancelled. Therefore, resulting terms are del P del Y into delta X delta Y delta Z. Okay. Plus F Y delta X delta Y into delta Z. Okay. This is the resulting force in the direction of Y. And due to the presence of this resulting force, there, there will be acceleration of the fluid element. Okay. Here we have taken a uh, control mass system. That means mass of the fluid element will remain constant. They, that will not be changed. Okay. So, what is the mass of the fluid element? Since the volume of, uh, since it is incompressible flow, therefore there is no change of density of the fluid element during the course of the flow. Okay. So, suppose rho is the density, then what is the volume of the fluid element? It is equal to rho, uh, sorry, what is the mass of the fluid element? It is equal to density multiplied by, multiplied by the volume. That means rho into delta x into delta y into delta z, this is the mass of the fluid element. Right? Density multiplied by the volume. So, this is mass of the fluid element and say a x, a suffix x denotes the acceleration uh, sorry, we are considering y direction, therefore we should use a y. a y is the acceleration in the direction of y. So this mass multiplied by a y, this is equal to what? Mass into acceleration, which is equal to resulting force. Say this resulting force is denoted by f y, f suffix y. That means this is what? This is also f y, right? This is f y. That means this force is equal to nothing but Fy. Okay. This is equal to Fy. So in the next line, we are writing what? We are writing the expression for Fy is this. So we are writing the same thing. F delta x, uh, sorry, rho delta x delta y delta z into Ay is equal to minus del p del y delta x delta y delta z plus this f y delta x delta y into delta z okay we can write this way 
Now divide both sides of this by uh, row delta x delta y delta z. So we are doing the same thing. Therefore, a y this is equal to what? Minus uh, 1 by rho del p del y. Okay. Minus 1 by rho del p del y. And here you will get 1 by rho into f y. Okay. So this thing we have got here. A y is equal to this much. Minus 1 by rho del p del y plus 1 by rho f y. So similarly for the direction of x and the direction of y we will get the same thing. Okay. Let me erase some portion of this. Uh, otherwise I cannot complete it here. So a y is equal to this much. Okay. So just uh, just by observe, just by watching the similarity, we can easily write the other equations also. Okay. Just by watching the similarity. Okay. So similarly, we can write here ax is equal to what? ax is equal to minus 1 by rho. 1 by rho, this is rho, okay. Del p, del x plus 1 by rho f y. Right? And here, again I am repeating this a y, this one. So, a y is equal to minus 1 by rho del p, del y plus 1 by rho f sorry, this will be x not y and here it will be y right and then is it all of these what these are all accelerations along x y and z directions minus 1 by rho del p del z plus 1 by rho here f z okay now this one is not required okay i have just shifted this one here so these are the things okay so these are the expressions for accelerations, right? Now we know that we know that uh, a x this is what this is rate of change of velocity in the direction of x with respect to time. So a x is equal to what du dt. This is the total derivative of u with respect to time, and we know that u is a function of x y z and t. Okay. So this du dt this can be written as what? This is equal to del u del t. This is actually known to you. This is equal to del u del t plus u del u del x. Okay. Plus v del u del y plus w del u del z. This is known to you. Ax is this much. Okay. And since it is uh, since it is uh, steady flow. Barnum's equation is applicable only for steady flow. Therefore, this part, del u del t, will be taken to be 0. This will be 0 simply. Therefore, ax is equal to what? ax is equal to this much. Similarly, since it is steady flow, so ay will be what? ay will be similar to this. Okay. Here, all this u will be replaced by v. So, it will be u del v del x plus v del v del y plus w, w what, del v, del z, okay, and this az, that will be equal to u del w del x, plus v del w del y, okay, plus w del w del z, right, these are the expressions for ax, ay and az, so, so all these things will be written here. Okay. Now one more thing. Our coordinate system was like this. This was the y direction. This was the z direction. And this was the x direction. Our coordinate system was like this. Here y and x, they were horizontal axis. Z was the vertical axis. Okay. Now if f was taken to be the body force. Okay. So suppose 
there is only one body force that is the weight of the fluid. Weight of the fluid is taken to be the only body force. Then in that case, we know that the uh, component along y and x axis will be zero. Body force will be acting in the vertically downward direction. Therefore, component along x and uh, along y will be zero. That means Fy and Fz. Okay, this Fy and uh, sorry, Fy and Fx they will be zero. Right? Fy and Fx will be zero. Only there will be one component that is Fz. So Fz will be equal to how much? Fz equal to will be how much? This was taken to be body force per unit volume. Okay. So if mg, mg is the body force, that is the weight of the fluid, okay, then mg divided by v, this is body force per unit volume. Here this v, better to write v line, v line stands for volume, volume of the fluid has been v line, which is equal to delta x delta y into delta z, okay, that way you can also write. So fd is equal to this much, so this is equal to actually what? rho g. Am I right? But one more thing is there which needs to be considered that fz is acting in the vertically upward direction but the weight is acting in the vertically downward direction. So they are opposite to each other. So with a negative sign we shall write this one. So fz is equal to minus mg by v. So this will be equal to minus rho g. Right? So here you can see the term is 1 by rho fz. So, what will be 1 by rho fz? Therefore, 1 by rho fz, that will be equal to only minus z. Okay. So, 1 by rho fz will be replaced by minus g in our resulting equation. Okay. So, let us write now the resulting equations. Okay. The uh, right hand side, you should write it in the first position. So, here, the term is minus 1 by rho del b del x. Right? And in the right hand side, what is that? Ax. And Ax is how much? Ax is this much. Ax is this much. So, you write that way. u del u del x. Right? Plus v del u del y. Plus w del u del z. Right? So this is the first equation, this one, okay. Second one was minus 1 by rho del p del y and here in the right hand side ay is there. So ay is equal to this much, u del p del x, right, plus v del p del y. plus w del v del z. Right? So this was the second equation. The third equation. Okay. Third equation was what? This one. Minus 1 by rho del v del z plus 1 by rho fz. And we have got 1 by rho fz is equal to minus g. So here you write minus g. G is what? G is acceleration due to gravity. And right hand side portion is this one. U del W del X right plus V del W del Y and last term is W del W del Z. Right. Let me check whether everything is visible or not. Yeah, everything is visible. Okay, so these are the resulting equations. Still, we need to uh, uh, do some algebraic manipulation to get the desired result. Okay. Uh, now, I am erasing the remaining part. Only requirement is these three lines. Okay, these three equations. That is the only requirement here. To get the desired result. That is, what is the desired result? Desired result is Barbell equation for Irrotational flow Right That is our Desired result Now uh, During the discussion of Irrotational flow 
okay during the discussion of irrotational flow you have seen that there are three components okay there are three components components are denoted by omega x omega y and omega z and these are written as this is omega x components of rotation omega x omega y and omega z rotation is a vector quantity so it should have three components like x y and z axis components are denoted by omega x omega y and omega z and these are written as this way expressions are like this okay at first there should be one half so these are the components here x is there so you write this way okay here y is there so you write this way z is there okay here u v w are the velocity components along x y and z axis and x y z are the spatial coordinates so since the flow which is taken for consideration here is irrotational flow and you know that for irrotational flow all these components should be zero so this is zero this is also zero and this is also zero since these are zero so these equations can be modified how you just see the first one so i am writing the first one minus 1 by rho del p del x this is there there is no need to change this one but here del u del y is there v del u del y and from here del u del y here finding here del u del y is there so since this is zero so del u del y is equal to nothing but del v del x so you write that thing so v into del v del x similarly the last term w del u del z is there del u del z is well here here del u del z is there so since it is zero so del u del z is equal to del w del x so you write that thing del w del x so this way we have got the first equation second equation minus 1 by rho del p del y is there so here del v del x is there here del v del x is well del v del x here so this del v del x will be replaced by del u del y so you write u del u del y plus v del v del y is there there is no need to change this one the last one w so del v del z is there here this one del v del z okay so here del v del z is there so del v del z will be replaced by del w del y since it is zero so del w del y right then go to the last equation this one okay so for this one del w del x is there del w del x is here so it is equal to del del, uh, del u del z so you are getting del u del z next one is v del w del y del w del y here you have found that one del w del y that is equal to del v del z so v del v del z okay plus w is there uh, del w del z del w del z is where del w del z am i right oh there is no need to change that one there is no need to change that one so now finally we have got these three equations okay now you multiply the first equation by dx multiply the second equation by dy and multiply the third equation by dz and then sum up all those three equations okay so we are now doing the same thing so now this is not required after getting these equations you multiply the first equation by dx so what will what you will get minus 1 by rho del p del x into dx multiply the second one by dy so you will get minus 1 by rho del p del y into dy then third one minus 1 by rho 
del P del Z into dz right and in the right hand side what you will get in the right hand side multiplying by dx okay so and uh, what you will get in the right hand side del u del x into dx plus del u del y into dy plus del u del z into dz Okay, then you will get in the right hand side V del V del X. This is del V del X into dx plus del V del Y into dy plus del V del Z into dz. Right? Plus W del W del X into dx plus del W del Y into dy plus del w del z into dz so these things you will get in the right hand side now this is not required again i need to erase this one okay now in the right hand side minus one by root can be taken as common and here del p del x dx del p del y dy plus del p del z dz that can be written is written as what? That is equal to actually dp because here p is a function of only x, y, and z. t is not there since it is steady flow. So since p is a function of x, y, and z, therefore dp is equal to del p del x into dx plus del p del y into dy plus del p del z into dz. So that thing I have written here. In the right hand side, oh, one more thing was there minus g. One minus g term was there. The, with this, that term was there. Okay, with z. So right here, minus g. Okay, by mistake, I didn't write this this term here. So minus g this term was there. Okay. So here you write this minus g dz will be there because we are multiplied by dz. So minus g g dz this term will be present there. So write the same thing. Minus g dz. And here you can see what is this? u is a function of x, y, z. Therefore this is equal to nothing but du. So it is u du. Similarly this is v dv. Okay. And this is w d w. Right. Now you integrate both sides of this. Okay. So you uh, do this integration this way dp by rho integration sign dp integration sign plus integration of g dz plus integration of u du plus integration of v dv plus integration of w dw this is equal to a constant this is constant of integration so in the first position you are getting p by rho second position gz and in the third position position you are getting u square by 2 okay so using this three you can directly write u square plus v square plus w square is equal to c right what is u square plus v square plus w square this is the square of the resultant velocity okay so from here i am writing the next line therefore p by rho plus gz plus v square by 2 is equal to constant now divide both sides of this by g okay so on dividing both sides by g you are getting what p by rho g write this one then v square by 2g plus z only z this is equal to c by g is equal to a new constant says c1 so you can see that p by rho g plus v square by 2g plus z is equal to constant so this is what this is Barnard's equation for irrotational flow this is not Barnard's equation for uh, this is not Barnard's equation along a streamline this is Barnard's equation for irrotational flow condition of irrotational, uh, irrotationality was used to derive this equation
Okay, so if the given flow field is irrotational, then for any two points, this formula or uh, this equation can be used. For any two points, those two points should not lie on a, stream, uh, on a stream line. This is not necessary. This is not the requirement. Those two points may be anywhere in the flow domain. Okay, so for any two points, this equation can be used. Condition is what? The flow should be irrotational. Okay. Okay. So I think uh, this is clearly understood by all the students. Uh, this is the end of this video. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. Have a nice day.